Hey, my brothers and sisters out there. I hope this day finds you well. Today, I want to go over an article. This is coming from the Blaze Media as of September 15th, and it was written by Chris Enlow. So big shout out to the Blaze. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. So as you can see here, it says Nancy Pelosi mocks pro-lifers claims they believe life begins at candlelight dinner the night before, which is one heck of a mock, right? So let's Let's dive in and see what's being said here. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi cruelly mocked Republicans and pro-life Americans on Wednesday for believing that life begins at conception, which we realize is a scientific fact. They, they only believe in science when it supports their idiocy. And, and when it's not even real science, they try to tell you, no, it is. And the only justification is that it's what we want it to be. And so when you do have settled science, if it, if it does contradict their worldview, their, their ideology, their, their political aspirations, their greed, you know, insert word, then they say it, it, it doesn't exist or it's not settled, which I find interesting. And then people keep falling for this. They keep falling for their double standards, right? If these people didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have standards at all, is, is what, is what uh, an intelligent person who's observant would say. Despite being a Catholic, which is interesting, <laughs> this girl's not a Catholic, in name only. She doesn't practice it. If you don't practice it, it's not what you are. These people will do whatever, whatever they need to do. It's, oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, she literally, lacks, she has no shame whatsoever. She has no self-respect. She has, she has nothing. She's just an empty, hollowed out husk of just desire and want. That's it. That's all she is. She doesn't care about anything or anybody at all. Right. And she's not the only one, which is why we need to get these folks out of there, because they're impeding our constitutional process. <laughs> Despite being a Catholic, Pelosi claimed at her weekly press conference that pro-life Republicans believe life begins at, at the candlelight dinner the night before. The California Democrat was responding to Republican Senator Lindsey Graham's new bill that would institute a national ban on abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy, which isn't going far enough. You understand that? That's, 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 the, that's the problem that I have with Republicans. You don't compromise with evil at all. Abortion is evil. It, it simply is just the murder of innocent babies. How in any world, in any language, is that not the most evil thing that you've ever heard of? And I, I challenge all of you, because I, I know some will hear this and go, yeah, but, but what about rape and incest? Because that's where everybody goes right? In cases of rape and incest, the innocent life committed no crime. Why would we hold the innocent life that literally had no hand in it? Why would we punish that life by killing it? And then under medical necessity, there's this huge process that go, that, that's needed by medical professionals who determine in the very, very small cases, there's already a process in place to determine if, if it's medically necessary. And even in those cases, the family can still make their own choice. So that's different, okay? All the rest, like all the like the 99% of abortions, they're just, it's just baby murder. That's all it is. That's all it is, okay? And that's evil. And so you don't compromise with evil. You don't go 15 weeks. You go, no, not at all. We'll allow for medical necessity since that goes through a process and even, even you know, we'll allow for medical necessity and that's it. That's it. Now let's do something about incestuous families and let's do something about, about the rapists. Let's punish these people but we're not going to punish innocent life because we're charged with protecting innocent life. That's what good people do. So I don't agree with Lindsey Graham on this at all. This is why, how we've gotten to this point now where people can get arrested for pronouns. This is how we've got to this point because you keep giving in a little bit, little by little to evil. And here we go. Republicans have not been outwardly supportive of the bill for several reasons, including the sensitivity of the issue ahead of the midterm elections and because many Republicans truly believe abortion is an issue for states to decide. Now, that's true. The federal government shouldn't be in it. It should be down to the states. But the Republicans are, are being weak here. They're being cowards because they should just come out and, and say it's evil, period. Whether you're discussing on the state level or you're discussing it on the federal level, it doesn't matter. It's still evil. It doesn't change 
but they're trying to pass the buck. They don't want to put they don't want to put their hat in the ring. Oh, the midterms are coming up. That's you prioritizing your position over what is right, and that's how we get to this point, right? When good people do nothing, that's when evil prospers and proliferates, and that's what you're seeing right here. Pelosi said the fractured response is evidence of conflict in the Republican Party. That's because these people are cowards and they're trying to secure their position. That's not indicative of of Pelosi's assertions being correct. Her She's still evil. What she wants is still evil. She's trying to say, well, look how they're com- look how they're conflicted. Their, their party is not unanimous on this. So, so we, we, we have a dog in this fight. We have a leg to stand on. No, at the end of the day, you're advocating for the murder of babies. How, how do you ever have a dog in that fight? Why would you want to win that, Ms. Pelosi? Why would you want to win more, more, more baby murder? <laughs> if why, that's your grand prize. You're like, yay, we get more baby murder. That's why they deflect. And they'd always just talk about the mother. Oh, it's the mother's reproductive rights. The mother was the mother's body. It's the mother. And when it isn't, that's all incorrect. Mothers have been gifted the ability to be a vessel for new life. That is a superpower. And you, are, you, you should be held in reverence for it. But when you, can, when you just talk about the, the baby, the, the mother's body and the mother's rights, what you're saying is that we don't care about the baby's rights. So then they go, well, it's not really a life. Okay, that's your excuse. It's not really a life. Oh, it doesn't start at conception. That makes absolutely no sense. So, so what do you think that the egg gets fertilized, but it's not really conceiving yet? Until so what? 16 weeks? <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Every part of that is the early development of what? A human being. I, the, it, it lacks common sense, but of course it doesn't follow with science, but it lacks even common sense. We've always known that life starts at conception. We've always known it. This is absolutely ridiculous. Like now, like all the stuff that we've always known, just like we, we always, we've always known what a man was and what a woman is. Do you see how they, they try to fundamentally unravel the fabric of reality in order for them to win because they can't win in actual reality because in reality, these people are all evil. So that's why they have to unravel reality and bring chaos where there was always order. For thousands of years, we've known what a woman and a man is. We know that life starts at conception. It's ridiculous. So I'll say it again. This is coming from Nancy Pelosi, and I quote, I think that we're seeing, I think what, we're, what you're seeing there is a conflict within the Republican Party. There are those in the party that think life begins at the candlelight dinner the night before, she said, to laughter. And these people are in defiance of, of that right. Pelosi continued, what right is she talking about? The right to kill babies? They're in defiance of that because they're saying whatever they're saying about, about it. So that's what you're seeing there. What? These aren't even, are these words? Is this, is this an actual sentence or is she just picking words at random? But we are united in our support for women's right to choose. See? See how they go? So the baby doesn't get a right. That, that innocent life doesn't get a right. We've, we've evolved so far that we now pick and choose which lives are valuable and which lives aren't based on circumstance or based on, in this case, her own desires, her own wants, her own pockets, her own power. Because if you say that a woman has a right to choose, then I would ask, well, why? Well, because she's a sovereign individual being. Okay. Well, so is the baby. They say, oh yeah, but that's, that's not a human yet. Okay. So it's the early development of what a baboon? <laughs> What are you talking about? Of course it's a human being. Just because it doesn't look like one yet, that's how we are in early development. Same thing like with the tadpole. Tadpole doesn't look like a frog. Tadpole actually looks like a, like a sperm, right? But we know that, that it's the early development of a frog. And if we don't tamper with it, it's going to grow legs and the tail's going to disappear. It's going to grow arms and then boom, frog. So that egg that has been conceived, if we don't impede it, it's going to become a human being. That's a fact. That's a fact. I don't care what you, oh, life didn't start at conception. It doesn't matter. What has started, if it's not impeded, it will become a human being, a sovereign individual being. And what they're saying is that that, that sovereign in, individual being does not have the same rights as the mother who's been gifted to carry it because the mother doesn't want it, because the mother is going to be too much of an inconvenience for the mom. So what you're saying is you're okay with murder as long as, as long as the mom is okay with it. It's her choice. She can choose to murder. 
there should not be any repercussions at all with that. Yeah, this, that's just, that's a good thing to do. That's a good thing. Murdering babies is it's a good thing. It just depends on the circumstances, right? <laughs> Pelosi's abortion advocacy reached a fever pitch earlier this year when it became clear the Supreme Court was going to overturn Roe v. Wade. All that did was put the power back to the hands of the states, didn't ban abortion <laughs> to all the ignorant out there. Just last month, for example, Pelosi declared that restricting abortion access is sinful. This is coming from the Catholic Nancy Pelosi. Restricting baby murder is a sin. I look, I'm I'm not a Christian, although Judeo-Christian values founded this country and they were right to do so. It was wise to pick Judeo-Christian values because those values do offer the best possibility for prosperity. But I'm not a practicing Christian and I don't want to disrespect their faith like Nancy Pelosi is with Catholics because she's not practicing. She uses it whenever it's convenient for her. But what I will say is that this, if this is demonic. If you read the scripture, this is demonic. When they're telling you that what is right and justified is really what the sin is, that's something that, that Satan would say. I'm just saying, like if you read the word, that's exactly how they say Satan works. I, I'm just saying, like that, that book's been around for a very, very long time. I didn't know Nancy Pelosi was gonna say this. I mean, there's, there's something there, right? Like it, that it's lasted this long. Or like Dr. Jordan Peterson say that, like there's, there's, there's something that you at least have to acknowledge. The Bible has been around for a very long time and it's still relevant today for a reason. But it's, it's prophetic. I mean, look at what she said. She's saying that having access to baby murder or restricting access to baby murder is sinful. <laughs> that's insane. That, that's insane. Because she is an ardent abortion advocate, baby murder advocate, San Francisco Archbishop Salvatore J. Cord Cordilion announced in May that Pelosi can no longer receive Holy Communion in his, in his diocese. Well, yeah, because she's evil. She's not a practicing Catholic, and he's recognizing that. Like, no, that's not what, that's not what Catholics believe. You don't murder. And you don't murder children. The, the most vulnerable and the most innocent stage of human development. That's what they want to prey on. They're like monsters who just want to eat children while they dream. It's so of course that was a good move. Republicans need to follow suit. They need to not give an inch on this. No medical necessity. That's it. Let's have harsher sentencing for rapists and let's, let's get back to, to building good families and encouraging young people to, to build good families. And that will handle the incest. And then when we do find case of incest, once again, we, we give consequences that are severe because that's evil. And that's what you do. You give consequences to deter evil action. You don't then compound that evil action with murder. That makes no sense, right? Unfortunately, Speaker Pelosi's position on abortion has become only more extreme over the years, especially in the last few months. Cordelione wrote in a letter, after numerous attempts to speak with her to help her understand the grave evil she is perpetuating, the scandal she is causing and the danger to her own soul she is risking, I have determined that the point has come in which I must make a public declaration that she is not to be admitted to Holy Communion unless and until she publicly repudiates her support for abortion rights and confess and receive absolution for her cooperation in this evil in the sacrament of penance, he explained. Exactly. The Catholic Church considers abortion a grave sin. Everybody does. By the definition, like it's murder. So how we look at murder, we're all against it as a society. A civilized society would be against murder, just like we're against rape. We're, that's because you don't compromise good with, you don't compromise good and evil. Right? You don't compromise it. That's why murder is wrong. Period. Right? We recognize that. It's why rape is wrong. It's why stealing is wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> right? There's, there's no, okay, you can steal sometimes. Oh, you can rape sometimes. You can murder sometimes. That's, that's demonic if, once again, if you're looking at scripture, that it's, it's a little bit of evil. Just a little bit. It's sprinkled with evil. Right? The rest of it's fine. No, you don't compromise right and wrong. If you want to have a discussion. So, 
Uh, I'll, I'll include this link. You guys can finish off. Actually, I'll, I'll read the last line. Human life must be respected and protected absolutely from the moment of conception. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how that works. <laughs> so I'll leave that link. You guys can uh, read through it yourself as well or save it for posterity. <laughs> but, but check this out. This is not, it literally isn't rocket science. If you're able to step back and really look at this dispassionately and you understand that what's being done is they're, they're trying to take an evil act and they're trying to justify it. That's all it is, which is, which is what evil does and what, what evil has done throughout history, right? Like they'll abuse you, but they'll say it's for your safety and they'll use something that seems like it makes sense or they'll use a, a tragedy where you're, where you're, you're, you know, very, very emotional and you're a little bit off balance as far as like your, your ability to reason. And they'll come in and they'll say things that, that seem to make sense. Like after 9-11 passing the Patriot Act, like this seems to make sense. We're going to keep you safer, right? Whatever we had in place didn't, didn't work because of this tragedy happened. And so we need to pass this additional thing and it's to keep you safe. And you're like, yeah, but what you're passing is actually going to take, a, it's, it's unconstitutional. It's going to remove rights away from me and, and give more power to a centralized government, which was never the intent. Oh, I didn't know, but it's just, but we're, I know, but if they act like it's a burden to have to do it, it's a burden for us to have to take more power and, and it's, but you know, we're going to do it to keep you safe. They did the same thing with the pandemic. They're trying to use climate, climate alarmism to do the same thing, right? It's the same thing. They're, it's evil just trying to proliferate and trying to get good people to either do nothing or to support it, or they use their powers to suppress the good, to suppress the the voices to, to suppress the power and the growth of goodness. And you see it all over the place. And you see it, you see the same type of behavior in other countries from other leaders because they're all evil. That's why they all act the same and speak the same. And then the people that are good, that's why they all act the same and they speak the same because that's how, that's how much of a dichotomy it is, right? The truly good people say the same things that I'm saying. They literally say the same things. I've, I've seen them, right? Evil would have you believe that you're alone and that you're the only one that thinks the way that you do. And then they use that as an excuse to say, that, see, that's why you're wrong because you're the only one out there. You're a minority and we're not. The majority of people are good, which is why we haven't blown everything up yet. Because if, if it was up to evil people, put it to you this way. Remember Lion King? You remember when Scar took over? He had to kill his brother who was good and just and, and who understood that everything needed to be in balance. Remember that? He had to kill goodness in order for him to take over. And then he lied to everyone. And then not even like, you know, very short time later, all of that lush, you know, great land and all those animals running around, everybody happy, was barren. Everybody had left. That's what evil does. That's what Pelosi does, Schumer, all of those folks do. And Republicans are complicit because they don't push back enough. So that's what's going to happen. Right? That's, they're going to make everything barren. If they were in charge, that is what would happen. We would be in this barren wasteland, this post-apocalyptic wasteland. <laughs> because evil wants for no reason. That's what lust is. Lust is want without reason. They believe somehow that they're better, that they deserve more, and that you deserve less. So in closing, what I want to do really, really quickly is I want to define murder and I want to define life. Okay, so the definition of murder is the unlawful premeditated killing of one human being by another. That is what abortion is, is a premeditated killing of one human being by another. By its definition, you can't even you can't even push back on that. That is the definition of murder. The only thing you can try to say is that, well, it's not a human being. That's the only thing you can say, right, which is which is scientifically wrong. Now I want to define life. Here's life, the condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter, including the capacity for growth, reproduction, functional activity, and continual change preceding death. So if you ever looked at conception, it starts off as soon as that sperm goes in there, it begins to grow. 
and it begins to change and it continues to change until death. That is literally life. That's the definition. The capacity for growth, functional activity, continual change preceding death, the ability to reproduce. Now, that is something you can say that, you know, generally it's going to be expected that that, that egg is going to turn into a human being that can reproduce, right? As long as everything goes right. So that is what life is. There, it's going to continue to change. It's not inorganic. It is life. And it is a human life because that's what we always know. That's what it's going to become. It was conceived by two human beings. It's going to become a human being. So please stop with the lies. Please stop murdering. And let's get back to what is good. And let's squash evil together. Okay? All right. And as always, they want you in the dark. I'm over here trying to help you to do what? To turn on that light. You guys be well.